air quality of the building becomes substantially better. Now this air that comes underneath the floor that is mixed with the space in a normal building design what happens is uh, the air comes into the space, it mixes, uh, the, the greatest load that happens in a building will happen within a meter or so of the outside wall, the glass. A typical design, you take all that heat and then you drag it back through the space by everybody back to the core of the building, back to the shafts, back to the mechanical room. In our building in Guangzhou, we're going to take that air and we're not going to bring it back to the core, not at first at least, we're going to bring it to the outside wall. The air will leave the space, enter into the double wall cavity low and be allowed to be drawn through the double wall skin and then be ducted uh, back to the mechanical room. This has a bunch of things. One, all this heat that is generated by the skin is never seen by the people in the space. You've, you've skipped that step. The other thing that it does is it forces air to pass through this cavity which ventilates the cavity which reduces the surface temperature of the glass which adds greatly to the thermal comfort of the people in the space. Uh, the other thing that it does is it gives us this heat source that we can use again for the for the humidification process without having to use electricity or gas to make that happen. So here's a, an image that shows all this happening, the air coming underneath the floor being drawn through the cavity uh, back through the ceiling and uh, also doubling up on systems there is a duct, one duct that is back in the corridor. If there were a fire or there were smoke the system has the ability to use that same duct that we're using uh, to bring that warm air back to the uh, core to be the smoke exhaust. So rather than pulling the air filled with smoke back through the double skin, it would be pulled back to the ceiling. So now we have all these variables that we didn't have before. We have the temperature of the ceiling panel, the chilled water flow rate through it, the volume of air coming from underneath the floor, uh, the, the ability to, to modulate how much air goes through the double wall, and we need to tweak all these things. We've got to get that, that right balance. And we found by adjusting these variables, we could create a condition. What this graph here is showing is, is operative temperature. Operative temperature is now considered to be a much better means of determining or measuring um, human comfort in a space. Uh, space temperature by itself doesn't give you enough information. So operative temperature looks at the temperature of the space. It also looks at the mean radiant temperature, uh, the, the effect of radiation on the human body. It takes those two measurements into account and comes up with one measure, operative temperature. And here in this model, you can see that the operative temperature measurement near the core is identical to the operative temperature as you get just within a couple inches of the exterior wall. Now in a typical building, if you had the south side of a building with an, even a nice insulated piece of glass, it becomes difficult to place individuals, chairs, seats, and desks close to that glass because people will be uncomfortable. So we tend to pull everybody off of that glass and we've created exterior uh, uh, zones where people can move through the space, but we can't sit people there. So that takes away from the flexibility of how we use space. But this kind of design, having the ability to move people directly adjacent to the outside wall, gives you more flexibility. The space is more usable than it was before. And these measurements, again, are showing that the air temperature is 72 degrees uh, in the middle of the space. It could get as hot as 78 at the glass. Um, standard glass, if you use standard glass, the temperature of that glass would be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's what would make it not nearly as comfortable for human beings. There was some concern by our client that, uh, that this air coming from the diffusers in the floor being pulled back to the floor would short circuit and that the air wouldn't go into the space and condition the space, uh, that it would be drawn immediately into the outside wall. So again, we modeled this and we were able to show age of air in the space with this model. This model shows that the age of the air being mixed in the space is roughly the same as the age of the air in the double wall cavity. So the modeling was able to help us prove that 